In this lecture video, I will discuss about transmission electron microscope. First of all, we have to learn what is transmission electron microscope. In a transmission electron microscope, the electron beam is transmitted through a very thin specimen or object and forms a highly magnified and detailed image of the sample. This microscope uses electron beams instead of light. The specimen used in transmission electron microscope should be very thin, less than 100 nanometers thick. A transmission electron microscope can create a much higher resolution and magnified image than a light microscope because of the shorter wavelength of the electron as compared to photons. In TEM, the sample's image is formed by the interaction between the transmitted electron beam and sample. TEM can tell us the structure, crystallization, morphology, and stress of the specimen in a better way as compared to a simple microscope. The formed image is then magnified and visualized on a fluorescent screen, layer of photographic film. Ernst Ruska and Max Knowles discovered the first transmission electron microscope in 1931. Now, we will discuss about the different parts of a transmission electron microscope. A transmission electron microscope is consist of different parts, among them the first part is electron gun. An electron gun consists of four important parts the filament, a biasing circuit, a Wehnelt cap, and an extraction anode. When an electron gun is connected with a power supply it starts to generate electron beams. These electron beams are now moved towards the anode plate and the TEM column. The next part of a transmission electron microscope is vacuum system. It creates a vacuum to prevent the interaction between air particles and electrons. So that electron will not be scattered. The third part of a transmission electron microscope is specimen stage. It has an airlock system to insert the specimen inside the vacuum with minimal loss of vacuum in other areas of the microscope. The fourth part of a transmission electron microscope is electron lens. These act as an optical lens by focusing parallel electrons at some constant focal distance. The fifth part of AA transmission electron microscope is apertures. Apertures are annular metallic plates, which consist of a small metallic disc. This disc permits the axial electrons to pass through it and exclude those electrons that are at a distance from the optic axis. By permitting the central electrons, apertures decrease the intensity of electron beams in TEM, which is good for the beam-sensitive samples. By this way it also removes those electrons are scattered to high angels. The last part is image recording system. It consists of the fluorescent screen that is used to view the image and the focus device. A digital camera is also included that records images after viewing. A vacuum system prevents electrons from colliding with air molecules, causing them to move and focus differently. Vacuuming allows electrons to move straight to the image. The vacuum system consists of a pump and gauge, walls, and a power supply. Monochromatic images are grayish, black and white. The electrons must be visible to the eye. Therefore, they are allowed to pass through the fluorescent screen at the base. Digitally, the image can be taken and displayed on a computer. The JPEG and TIFF formats can also be saved. The image can be transformed from its monochromatic state into a colored one depending on what recording device is used. For example, pixel cameras can store an image in color. Colored images allow for easy identification and characterization of images. Now we will discuss about the working principle of a transmission electron microscope. Electron microscope follows the same principle as a light microscope follow. The major difference is, the light microscope uses artificial light or natural light to create an image of the specimen, whereas an electron microscope uses electron beams. In M when electron beams cross through a specimen, the electron particles are started to scatter. The electromagnetic lens on M focuses the scatter electron on a screen and creates an image of the specimen. 
Now, we will talk about how these transmission electron microscope works. First of all, a tungsten filament is heated, which is also called an electron gun. The heated tungsten filament or electron gun will start to release electron beams. An electromagnetic coil and high voltage, up to several million volts, applied to these electron beams to accelerate their speed. A condenser lens with a high aperture eliminates all the high angle electrons and focused all the electron beams into a thin, small beam. The high speed electron beams are now transmitted through the specimen. The transmitted electron beams are focused into an image with the help of an objective lens. The vacuum chamber of TEM prevents the collide of electrons with the gas atoms. The electron beams are projected onto a phosphorescent screen, which creates an image of the specimen, also called a micrograph. All the images are captured by a charge-coupled device camera, which is located underneath the screen. Now we will discuss about the image formation in transmission electron microscope. After releasing from the electron gun, a condenser lens focused the electron beam onto a specimen. Condenser aperture excludes high angle electrons from the electron beam. Now some of the electron beams strike the specimen and transmit through it. An objective lens focuses this transmitted electron beam on a phosphorus screen or charge coupled device camera to form an image of the specimen. An optional objective aperture can be used to block the high angle diffracted electrons to increase the contrast of the image. Now the image is passed through the column and projector lens to form an enlarged image. When the image strikes the phosphorus screen it generates light, allowing the viewer to see the image. The dark area of the image indicating those areas on the sample where fewer electrons were transmitted. The lighter area of the image indicating those areas on the sample where more electrons were transmitted. Now we will discuss about the application of transmission electron microscope. TEM is used to study the topographical, morphological, compositional, and crystalline information. It helps to analyze the structure and texture of the specimen. TEM used in semiconductor analysis. TEM is also used in production and the manufacturing of computers and silicon chips. It is also used in technology companies to identify flaws, fractures, and damages to micro-sized objects. TEM is also used in colleges and universities for research and study purposes. To distinguish between animal and plant cells. It is also used in nanotechnology for studying nanoparticles like ZNO nanoparticles. It can be used to identify and detect fractures. To study and visualize the cell structures of bacteria, viruses and fungi. View bacteria flagella and plasmids. View the sizes and shapes of microbial cell organelles. Let's discuss about the advantages of a transmission electron microscope. TEM provides 1 million times of magnification power as compared to a simple microscope. It provides detailed information about the structure of specimens. TEM can produce a high quality and detailed image of the specimen. It is easy to operate with proper training. Permanent images can be produced by it. It can be used in a wide variety of ways, including basic biology and nanotechnology, education, and industrial applications. There are different disadvantages of a transmission electron microscope such as, they are very expensive. TEM is very large in size, they require a room to operate. Required proper training to prepare the specimen for TEM. It produces monochromatic pictures unless it uses a fluorescent screen at visualization's end. They are sensitive to electromagnetic movements and vibrations, so they are only used in areas where they are protected. To function, it requires constant voltage flow. They can be difficult to maintain. Artifacts can be dangerously damaged by chemical fixations, dehydrators, or embedments. Only electron-transparent specimens are used in TEM. 
To operate a TEM requires special training. It is tedious to prepare specimens for viewing under the TEM. Now, look these specimen images which are observed by using a transmission electron microscope. The first one is an enlarged image of cotton flowing tissue showing a sieve element, top cell, and a companion cell, bottom cell. The second one is an image of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. Virus particles are shown emerging from the surface of cells cultured in the lab. The spikes on the outer edge of the virus particles give coronaviruses their name, crown-like. The third one also is an image of SARS-CoV-2 virus particles, isolated from a patient. Thank you for watching this video. Notes related to this lecture video is given in description. Please visit the link.